Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of the wooden drift boat build. I'm super excited to get started on the next phase, which is building the frame. This is gonna be what's called a ply on frame type boat. So we're gonna head over to my local hardwood dealer, Johnson's Workbench. We're gonna get the materials to start making the frame out of. We're gonna be using a really good wood for boat building called Moranti and also white oak, which is also good for boat building since it doesn't have a tendency to rot nearly as much as some other woods. But first, let me give a big thanks to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video. I know what you're thinking. Me and Oots, we don't shave, but we'll chat about that a little bit later on. Let's get headed over to Johnson's and start this project. As you can tell, I have a pretty small shop at home and I don't have enough room for a large joiner or planer. I do have a tabletop planer, but even that's always getting in the way. So I'm really lucky in the fact that I have a place like Johnson's nearby that I can go and pick up my lumber and have them to mention it right then and there for me. It's really affordable to have them do it and it saves me a ton of time as well. And on September 6th and 7th of this year, I'll be doing some presentations at Johnson's annual Wood Expo. So if all goes well, I will have this boat finished and on display there. So make sure that if you're in the area, come and check it out and say hello. Grant, dude, what do you think? First trip to Johnson's. This place is unreal. <laughs> Can't believe it. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome, huh? Yeah, should have been here a long time ago. I'm a pretty lucky guy. You're going to have to start making trips down from uh, Charlevoix a heck of a lot more. For sure. Screw having them bring it up to me. I'm I know. It's worth it. the trip. This place is like paradise. It's awesome. All right, so we're back from Johnson's. We have all of our lumber. Now it's time to start ripping up the Moranti that we bought to build our frame. We need to get some of the frame cross members already cut so that we can finish laying out the rocker angle on the bottom, clamp that frame in place, and then we can finish building the strong back and move on making the rest of the frame. So we're gonna get started with that. So once I'm done ripping the boards, I'm just gonna lay out and cut all my bottom frame members. And I like, I always like busting out this really cool antique uh, tape measure that I found at an um, auction one time. It's really cool. You squeeze it and it actually shoots out. So it's the reverse of most tape measures. And uh, I've only ever seen the one. It's really cool. I'm cutting the boards to rough length here. They don't need to be exact quite yet. And because they're so long, I don't have room in my miter station for them to fit. So it makes sense to just use the pole saw. And the pole saw works really fast and it's a lot of fun too. Then just like with the tape measure, it's fun to break out some unique tools. This is a hand plane that I made, uh, I don't know, about a year ago. There's a video for that if you're ever interested and it takes beautiful shavings. I'm just kind of edge joining and, and smoothing up those saw marks on the edges of those boards. Next, we're taking a nice long level and a bunch of clamps and we'll clamp each board so that it is nice and level on the strong back. All right, so we have most of the frame bottom pieces installed. We have it fared really nicely. It's nice and level, it's looking beautiful. Now we need to work on the transom before we finish laying out our angles to finish off these frames. We have our transom designed here, laid out nicely, and our boards, we're making the transom frame out of oak rather than Moranti, like we have the rest of it for that extra strength and stability. We're gonna start cutting that stuff out on the miter saw, do some mortise and tenon joinery and some half laps, secure that thing together, and then we can move on with the rest of the frame. The original set of plans just called for all these pieces to be butt jointed together and relies on the fact that they are screwed and epoxied to the plywood back that goes on there to give it all that strength. But I just didn't think and didn't trust that would stay strong long term. So it's really not that much extra and I love doing joinery anyway. So I added some of this joinery to really make sure that that stays nice and strong since there's going to be a motor mounted on it and there's going to be a lot of stresses um, when that motor is being used.
So I know it seems pretty ridiculous that both Oots and I have full beards and Dollar Shave Club is sponsoring this video. <laughs> well, when I got out of high school and joined the Air Force, I was forced to shave my face every day. And then when I got out of the Air Force, I worked in public safety. And again, I had to have a nice clean shaven face. And I actually had a subscription to Dollar Shave Club when I was in public safety and I really liked it, made it super easy. Well, since I quit that job to become a full-time woodworker, I can get away with growing my beard and so now that's what I do. Except for when I act crazy and decide to shave my face with a plain blade, which if you haven't seen that, I'll put a video to that down in the description. It's really funny, but don't try that at home. Make sure you get Dollar Shave Club for your shaving materials. Anyways, even though I stopped shaving, I still use Dollar Shave Club to get all my shower gels and my shampoo and deodorants and hair products and they even have toothpaste and some nice cologne too. So whether you shave or not, Dollar Shave Club has all your needs, all your hair, skin, oral, and shower needs covered. So go check them out and if you use the link dollarshaveclub.com slash TCC, you'll get your starter kit for just $5.00. Then after that, you can get the full size products at regular price. So please make sure you use that link that's down in the description. It's a huge help to this channel and I really appreciate it. Let's get back to the project. Next, Grant and I are gonna lay out and work on the mortise and tenon joiner for this transom. And if you didn't see the part one video where I introduced Grant, he's a boat builder who also lives in Michigan, just up north a couple hours. He saw that I was starting this project and he graciously offered to come down and help me get started. He does some really cool stuff over on Instagram, so make sure you go over there and give him a follow. I'll link both his and my Instagram page down in the description. You'll notice that I use a lot of Western and Japanese style tools. And the reason is I just really like having nice quality tools and I think that both styles have certain strengths and weaknesses in each. So by having both and being proficient in both, it really gives me a lot of versatility and options when I work. Grant is going to laminate a couple boards to the top of the transom to create that drop down middle section that you see and that's where the motor will rest. After I cut close to my line with a saw for the tenon cheeks, I finished flattening them and getting them perfectly square and to depth using a router plane. One of the things I really like about these Japanese saws is that at the end of the cut, you can tilt them up and use just the front couple teeth to finish off that cheek and it won't damage the front or back of that shoulder line. I'll use the tenons themselves to mark out the mortise location. Then I'll hog out the majority of the waste using a drill press and then finish with a chisel.
Then I decided to give the uh, transom top a nice little rounded edge rather than a sharp corner. All right, so I have the transom dry fit. Everything went together really nicely. I'm happy about how everything's fitting. Next, we're gonna glue it up, and I'm gonna be using epoxy for my glue. Basically, I'll be gluing everything on this boat using epoxy and coating the entire thing in epoxy. It's a must for boat building as it fills voids and it's completely waterproof. So let's get started. I'm gonna put some wax paper down on my bench to protect the bench, and we'll glue this thing up. Another really nice thing about epoxy is that it cures at a much slower rate. In fact, actually, you can adjust how long you want your epoxy to cure. There's all sorts from quick five minute all the way up to things that take 24 to 72 hours to fully cure like your casting epoxies. So you can take your time. You can do it right. You don't have to worry about that glue curing before you actually get it together. Then just like with wood glue, I'm going to try to get as much of it off as possible. It'll save me on sanding later on. All right, everyone, the transom is glued up. It went well. That's going to be it for this video. Make sure you tune in next time. We're going to finish this transom, smooth it, sand it, and then we're going to get it mounted to the strong back and then finish working on the frame. So we'll see you on that video. Have a good one.